You wanted to see me, sir? I hesitantly entered the office of campus president Jacob Warren. His rent a cop security guards pulled me out of my criminology final, telling me that he needed to see me about Sorenzio's murder, which I found disconcerting since I thought his death was being declared a suicide. When I entered his office, President Warren was standing by his large plexiglass window overlooking the campus. He was silent with his hands folded behind his back. Sir, did you want to see me about something? Sit some- down. I'm, I'm sorry? Sit the fuck down, Beacon. I sat the fuck down. The president and I have an odd relationship. It's actually because of him I'm able to run my PI business on this campus. During my sophomore year, I discovered that our treasurer had been embezzling campus funds and using it to pay off his gambling debts amongst other unscrupulous activities. I gathered proof and brought this to President Warren's attention, and he was incredibly grateful to say the least. In return for unraveling the conspiracy, he gave me free range to do my detective thing, so long as whatever I was doing was within legal grounds. It was a good thing, too. Because otherwise, I'd, you know, have to get a license and shit. And I ain't got no time for that. He turned around to face me. His pudgy figure started to approach me. Beacon, what in the shit have you gotten yourself into? I forgot to mention he has a bit of a temper. Look, sir, if you just let me... Shut the fuck up, Beacon. I'm speaking. I can see you're frustrated, but frustrated? I... Frustrated? Frustrated? Beacon, I've got bodies dropping all over my campus. I'm a little more than frustrated. Well, let's not exaggerate. It's just one body, sir. Shut the fuck up, Beacon. Okay. You know when I gave you permission to play detective on my campus? You promised me. Promised me that you'd stay out of trouble. That you wouldn't make me regret my decision to let you do all this crap. That you wouldn't fuck me, Beacon. Do you like fucking me, Beacon? First of all, huh? Second of all, what exactly is going on? What exactly have I done here? Warren was pacing around his office like a madman. (sighs) Jason Sorrentio. I'm sure you're well aware we found him dead this morning. Yeah, and from what I hear, it seemed to have been a suicide, right? (sighs) Sir? Not exactly. What do you mean? Didn't you guys find him in the shower with a knife in his hand? There... Was no knife. Come again? We found Sorenzio with his throat slit in the shower. But, there is no murder weapon present at the crime scene. I don't understand. But you're telling people he was found with a knife and he committed suicide? I'm the goddamn president. I'm in charge of running this campus and keeping my students safe. And perhaps, more importantly, making my students feel safe. Could you imagine the pandemonium if people knew there was a killer running around on campus? Son of a bitch, I thought. Orrin was covering it all up. Sir, with all due respect, that's really, really... What? What are you going to say? Low? Dishonest? Deceitful? You don't get to judge me. I made an executive decision so that people could feel safe. Okay, fine. So, what exactly does this have to do with me? Why don't you tell me? I beg your pardon? What's your connection to Sorenzio? I don't have a connection with Sorenzio. Really? Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, well that's a fucking relief. Then I guess the surveillance footage we have of you snooping around his dorm room yesterday is what? Your fucking stunt double? Fuck, I thought. Oh, okay. I can explain that. Oh, I'm all fucking ears. Please tell me you're not involved in this shit. I leaned back in his chair, rubbed my head across my scalp, and exhaled. (sighs) Okay, I had been investigating Sorrentio. It was a case I took on. What kind of case? His girlfriend. She asked me to look into him to find out if he was sleeping around on her. And? Well, it turns out he was. And now that may or may not have gotten him killed. Christ, I need a goddamn cigarette. You want one? Hell yes. He went in his desk drawer and pulled out a fresh pack of Marlboros. He took two out and passed one to me. So... This girlfriend of his. You think she did it then? I don't know, honestly. What's her name? Carla Steinberg. What does she look like? Is she fuckable? What? Fuck you, Beacon. Don't judge me. My wife hasn't fucked me since 1997. I'm running a campus full of prime vagina. Let me have my fantasies. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. In any event, I'm looking into all this and trying to get to the bottom of it. 
Earlier today, I met with the girl that Jason was sleeping around with, and she gave me a lead that I was going to follow up on until your goons picked me up and dragged me here. My apologies, but I can't have people knowing about our relationship. I'm sure you understand. And let me tell you something. Whatever you're doing to get to the bottom of this, do it fast. I can't keep this suicide cover up for long. We need to find out who really off this kid, and we need it done yesterday. I understand that I'm on it, sir. No, you don't understand. That surveillance footage of you is pretty damning. It kind of paints you as a suspect. I'm a suspect? Seriously? Watch your tone. For what it's worth, I believe you. I know you didn't do this. But right now, we have no other leads, and we have a video footage of you sneaking into the victim's dorm room 24 hours before his demise. I'm not going to be able to keep a lid on this for long. What are you saying? I'm saying you have 48 hours to find the real killer, or else I won't be able to protect you. Is that clear to you? Crystal. I got up and made my way out of the room. As I was about to exit, he called out to me, saying, Oh, and Beacon, watch your back out there. Yeah, copy that. I was officially up against the clock. I needed to get to the bottom of this and fast. Damn surveillance footage, I thought. How could I have been so stupid? I could only imagine how suspicious I looked sneaking into Jason's room the way I did. Not to mention Alyssa helped me do it. I couldn't allow her to get entangled in this mess. And at that point, there was no turning back. The sun started to fade away and dark clouds settled in after I left President Warren's office. Rain was coming. I don't know why I said that so dramatically just now. A perfect way to end a perfect fucking day, I said out loud to myself. Just then, my cell phone buzzed in my pocket. I received a text from Sam, Charlotte's brother. He finally replied back to me saying, Thanks for reaching out. Let's meet tonight at 10pm by the track field. I replied back, agreeing to meet him. Hours passed by and I made my way to the bleachers by the track at 10 on the dot. Sam, the security guard, was there waiting for me. Sam was tall, but not that much taller than me. He had a slim but athletic build, well-groomed blonde hair, and one of those Ryan Gosling pretty boy faces. You Beacon? Sam, I presume. Yeah. Hey, thanks for meeting me, man. Why are we meeting here? It was the best place I could think of where we could talk in private. Also, there's no security detail here. Fair enough. So I spoke to your sister earlier today about Jason Sorrentio's death. She seems convinced that it wasn't a suicide. Yeah, she, uh, she was really close to the guy, you know? I never met him myself, but from what she told me, it seemed like things were getting pretty serious between them. And Charlotte told you that he was already seeing someone else? Yeah, she told me. Carla Steinberg. Talked about her a lot. In what sense? In the sense that she was afraid of Carla. Apparently Jason felt that she was getting close to discovering his thing with my sis. She, jeez, she kind of asked me to spy on her. So you actually spied on Carla? Well, kind of. See, I work at security detail at her dorm a few days a week. Charlotte asked me to keep an eye on her, see if she was acting at all suspicious. I uh, can't believe I'm even saying this, but at one point, she swore she was being followed. Huh, paranoid much? Oh, she was definitely overly paranoid. But she's my sister, you know. I did what she asked, and I spied on her a little. And? And, well, a few hours before Jason was found dead, I was working a late shift, and I noticed Carla leaving the dorm. It was around 3 in the morning. 3 a.m. wasn't too long after I had left Carla's dorm. Now, honestly, at the time, I didn't give it too much thought. I mean, this is college, and 3 a.m. is booty call hours and all that. But because of Charlotte, I decided to follow her. And where did she go? Sam then pulled out his smartphone. Here, take a look for yourself. I actually videotaped her. Sam showed me the video he took of him following Carla, all the way to Sorrentio's door. She was wearing a gray Sunbrook hoodie and sweatshorts. She even made sure to conceal herself under her hoodie as she entered the door. She was looking all kinds of suspicious. Tell me that don't look all kinds of suspicious, man. Yeah, it sure does. That ain't all. Sam showed me more footage. Take a look at this. This is almost 40 minutes later. Wait. You were hanging outside her dorm all that time? 
Eh, <laughs> not exactly. See, while I was there, I decided to stop for a booty call myself. And then, coincidentally, when I was on my way out, so was she. Sam proceeded to show me footage of Carla exiting Sorenzio's dorm. It looked like she was leaving in a bit of a hurry. See that? That wasn't too long before they found him dead, right? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't prove anything. But that can't be a coincidence, right? It is a little suspect. But, Sam, I still need something more concrete. Is there anything else you could give me? I got one thing. Sam went into his coat pocket and searched for something. Seconds later, he pulled out a small key and handed it to me. What's this? What do you think it is? The key to Carlo's room? I could lose my job for giving that to you. But we gotta do something. If this chick really did kill Jason, she might come after my sister. And I can't let anything happen to her. Maybe if you search her room, you could find something that could tie her to the murder. Something like... The hoodie? Exactly. If Carla slit his throat, then there's sure to be blood spatter on her hoodie. That's what I was thinking. But, it's still a stretch. That's assuming she was even wearing the hoodie when she killed him. Or, also assuming she hasn't washed it already. She would have had plenty of time to do it. We gotta try though, man. You're a detective. I'm sure if not the hoodie, you could find... I don't know, something to tie this all together? Maybe you'll get lucky. Alright, alright, I'll see what I can do. I'm going to need you to distract her while I search her room. Distract her how? Your campus security. Figure something out. Just get her out of her room for five minutes. Okay, uh, I, 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 can, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Good. Text me when the ghost is clear and I'll search. No problem. I'll head to her dorm now. Hey, thanks, Beacon. You're good people. I can see why you got such a good rep around here. You're the only dude I know crazy enough to do something like this. Yeah, crazy like an ox. Fox. What? Crazy like a fox. That's... that's the expression. I ain't no fox, Sam. Never mind. More and more I found myself wishing I'd never been involved in all this shit. I dreaded what I might find in Carla's room. I camped myself outside Carla's door and waiting on Sam's signal. After about an hour of waiting, I received a text from Sam giving me the go. I made my way inside her dorm and headed to her room discreetly. As soon as I got inside, I couldn't shake this feeling of guilt. Something was really bothering me about all of this, but I told myself that it had to be done. I delicately went through her clothes drawers to find the gray hoodie. Going through Sorenzio's things was one thing, but sifting through Carla's... unmentionables? I felt like a scoundrel. But damn, did that girl have a fine collection of yoga pants. Tucked at the very bottom of her drawer was the hoodie. But that wasn't what caught my eye. It's what was hidden right under it. A bloody knife. 